Welcome to another episode of Stand Up Memory. We do everything we can I, to I, try and I, look I, young I, I, and be refreshed <laughs> and, and happy. And the first thing you do is to sit and talk about how you can't recover from driving home from a gig. And then our guest chimes in that he can't. And I'm, we're just still shot. And so we're leading into this podcast as... Three old codgers that can't even get out of bed. We, we, can't, we can't have that. Well, I was we got to be perky. Well, you know, that was right before we went on. But when we went on, I had energy. And I said what I usually say, welcome to Stand Up Memories. And I know, and it's so boring. I always think I should interrupt. Well, you do. Oh. I'm Peter Bales. This is Jackie the Joke Man, Martin. And we have a guest. You know. And we have a terrific guest. We have a terrific, terrific comedian by the name of Mick Thomas, who Stand comes, to, there he is right there, <laughs> and he comes to Long Island uh, and New York, the New York area, uh, via Ireland, where he is originally from, mm -hmm. and he's got a wonderful accent, and he talks a lot about that, but now he is taking America by storm, although we're tired when we get back from our gigs. It's a long drive. It's a long ride from Ireland. Yes. Where in Ireland? I'm from Wexford, a town nobody's ever heard of. But where is that here? It, yeah, right there in the bottom right. We're like the Florida of America without the palm trees. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only association we have when I tell people, like it's a humble brag, is the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. That whole, that's supposed to be Normandy. I live over that hill where that was shot. Ah, oh, that's yeah. very cool. Where right. they were shot. Where they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, <laughs> little Veterans Day humor that yeah. is. <laughs> now, tell me, uh, wh when did you come to this country first? Almost 20 years ago. All right. Almost 20 years ago. We've talked about this before. What do you have to do? Weekly go for like accent lessons to keep it up? Yeah. <laughs> or else I get, I, you know what's funny? When, when people talk about my accent, it's my accent is is my own made up accent, right? Because in Wexford, how they talk, it's really fast. So I have this made up, slow down version of how we speak. So when I go home, people are like, what? what? What's that noise? So over here, it's because like- Because over here, we wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand. If I was to go up on stage and talk exactly how my family and friends talk and people in my town, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get a, a lick of what I'm saying. First impressions of America when you came here 20 years ago. Good, I liked bad, it. mixed. I liked it a lot, actually. Yeah, I was a big fan of America when I got here. Were you a comic in Ireland? And no, then I started. Here? I started here in America. I started on Long Island at Governor's. It was my first time I walked on stage. But I've always I wanted to be a comedian since I was five, five years old. But I just never had the location or the place to do it. Were the places Ireland. to pursue it, and you just there was maybe one club in Dublin, but that was two hours away, and it's you know you don't. You ne I never heard of an open mic night. You didn't know what an open mic night was. And I don't think there even was open mic nights, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, that's changed now across the globe, but um, I didn't know how to go about starting stand-up, so I just kind of let it go. But this guy has boxing in his DNA. You kickboxing and boxing. Yeah. Boxing and yeah, kickboxing. Yeah, yeah. Kickboxing. Right, right. Now, when did you start doing boxing? Well, I did boxing when I moved here because there was no kickboxing because MMA was just taken off. Okay. So there was no, hey, let's go to do one kickboxing class. So I said, you know what, I'll, I'll go to the Golden Gloves. And I just slid into the Golden Gloves and I did that and I got beat. That, in the that is I, I, Amazing. something I can't comprehend. Boxing, <laughs> I can't comprehend. But kickboxing, I mean, why not just walk in front of a fire truck? You know, like it's... It's crazy. Sometimes it's like that, man. But you know what? It made, it made stand-up very easy because I remember getting knocked down in front of 4,000 people. Right? <laughs> that's, that's embarrassing. If someone doesn't laugh at your joke, who, who gives a crap? <laughs> you know, what's the worst that can happen to you? It per puts things in the perspective. Yeah, of course I mean, it does. It, yeah. So, but Bob, Although that's weird because um, I've read multiple places where like five-star generals have said they can walk into battle and not even flinch. Right. And if they have to deliver a speech to a hundred people, it, that, that they're out of their mind. So it's uh, it's all where your head is at. You yeah, know? I don't know where that comes from. I, I read something about it, and Peter, you're a you're a history buff too, so maybe you heard the same thing too. But it goes back to our our ancestors of speaking in the tribe, and if you were wrong about what you were saying, you were kicked out of the tribe. Right. <laughs> yes, or killed. 
So probably that, would... that too. So I think that that fear might be encoded in our DNA based ah, on ah. you know what if I you know hey the fig tree is over that way and then it turns <laughs> out it was that way they're like you know what let's get rid of bales out you of the better not say. Right. so there's going to be a payoff one yeah, way somewhere or along the line. <laughs> interesting. That's an interesting reason for people wow. being afraid of public speaking. Yeah, that's and what I read. That's what I read. I never. Whereas with that. you, it's just your act. It's just my act. <laughs> I'm insecure <laughs> about that's my what we act. We're just rude. <laughs> well, he's rude. I'm rude. So, Mick Thomas. Where did you move to on Long Island? I, when I moved here first, I moved to Wontaw. Wontaw. And then I bought a house out in, out in Suffolk, out east. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And you have a family? I do. I have a missus and two, two American kids. Two American two kids? Two American kids. What do they know about Ireland? Everything you've they were. I bought them. I brought the them. The missus you brought with you? No, no. She's from here. She's, she's a Long Islander. Yeah. And my kids were, 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 were born here. Um, but I brought them back to Ireland when they were babies each time to get baptized. I had them baptized over there. Um, and I've brought them back I think, twice since then. But we're looking at another trip again. You had them, them baptized in Ireland? In Ireland, yeah. Because just, baptism doesn't count in the United it States. It doesn't. The water's not. If, you know the people, <laughs> you know the New Yorkers are always talking about the water for pizza and bagels? Yes, yes. It's the holy water. Is not, it's, that's <laughs> us with holy water. That is... <laughs> that is so crazy, funny, special. I can't even. I can't even think of a category for that. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I, the water isn't right anywhere else for pizza or bagels. You know that's but what's that like. would not be right. <laughs> it's not right. Words, when you walk out of a church, you don't even bother with because it's. Nah, it's, it's like ah, it's, it's Long Island water. It's, 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 it's garbage. No, nah, right from God's sewers. It's garbage. <laughs> oh, oh, now can you have people? I don't know how religious. <laughs> can they people chip you like a jar full of? Um, oh yeah, you can. You, you can, can buy. So it's not where it is. You can go to Lords, which is very big in Europe. Lords in, is in France, and apparently this this is a is is a place where the Virgin Mary appeared, and apparently it's got healing qualities to the water. So people will send you over buckets and jars yes. of, and and it's in like a flask shape like Mary, and like you unscrew the top of Mary's head, and you get. Here you go. There's a bit of holy water for you. Well, that's if people are buying Poland Spring, they might as well buy the water. They might as well. Lourdes. Imagine how good the pizza would be. So some water from Lords. Oh. <laughs> that's that's way too funny. An idea. <laughs> that's way too creative. Oh, <laughs> pizza made with holy water. Holy yeah, water. the bagels. So, Mick Thomas, transplanted from Ireland to Long Island, starts out in comedy. Mm-hmm. How it had to be tough. It couldn't have been easy at first. It wasn't, and I'll tell you why. And that's no disrespect. Would, to they, had you t toned down your accent before you gave it a shot? I you had to because a yeah, I, I was here about two years, three, 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 four years. Uh, because I started a comedy, and I'll tell you why I started a comedy uh, when my daughter when my daughter was born, and I'll tell you why. But going back to Peter's question is, I didn't find it hard because. I had an act right out the gate. Like, so that's no disrespect to comics who start and find it tough. Because I had this, I was from another land, yeah. and it was very easy for me to get laughs, because all I had to do was just crap on what you do. And, and, I, and I kept that act for about two years, and of course I built on it, and I kept the same premise, and you say that, we say that, I'm confused about the thing that you do. Uh, yeah, you had a built-in premise. So two to three years, I never experienced a bomb. I never experienced a bad bomb, which is not good because I think you should experience those right away. So when I decided to move away from that, like now I got kids and let me talk about what that, and then I, then I started the bomb because I moved away from the safety net of being this foreigner. And then it was like, ooh, then I got shocked. Then I got okay. rocked. Because uh, three years kind of backwards. It really is because when I when I look at guys when when I see guys who go up on, on the first time on an open mic and they bomb and I and I always give them credit because I probably wouldn't have come back for my first time on stage. I bombed. I probably wouldn't have walked back onto that stage and go. You know what? I tried it. It's not for me. But I was very lucky to kind of just I had something to say. You had, a lot of, was your act was a fish out of water. You know. Yeah, and I a am. lot of comics just when they start, like who are they? They don't know what they right, talk about. They don't know what right. they just want to. They're yeah. struggling to find what is funny. What should I talk about? You know, and 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 it's so for me, I was just lucky enough to well, have that. Well, you had the built-in hook, and then when you exactly. started to expand on that, mm -hmm. that's when you experienced. Bomb. Yeah. And Jackie's right. It's kind of the opposite of what what right. It really is. is so weird Experience. because. <clears throat> to this day, 
before a show, <clears throat> like I'm always a mess. Yeah. No matter what Chris Rock said, I've said it a million times mm -hmm. on the show. Chris Rock said comics don't get paid for doing their acts. They get paid for the 20 minutes before the show. Okay? <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah, everybody's yeah. a wreck. And every time you look back two years or five years or 10 years and like, how did I have the nerve to go on? How did you have mm. the nerve to go on stage 40 years ago? You just don't know any better. Right. Or you don't, it's, it's a very odd, odd thing, you know. You know, I, I bombed so badly at Catch a Rising Star, but I had played guitar and told jokes for so long. Mm -hmm. I was so used to people being loud and it, it was, I just didn't know any better. That's just what I did. And it was so strange to go on stage at Catch a Rising Star because when we were in the band, we spent most of our time, hey, we're over here, pay attention, right, we're going to tell right. jokes. And all of a sudden you walk on stage and you got everybody's full attention. And like, you, I didn't know even how to deal with it. It was yeah. like, you know, whoa, and I didn't deal with it. It was horrible. And you can't drown out the silence with a guitar or, or, or a drum. It's just you and your words. That well, you is know, it. I, actually, I actually went up with a with a sponsor i think the second time and it was a very dirty sponsor and i got huge laughs and i thought wow this is a piece of cake and i turned around and i don't think i got another laugh though like <laughs> <laughs> you know how crazy is i gotta I, tell you i bombed every night for a year unfortunately that year was 2022. yeah <laughs> you opened for me i was watching it happen <laughs> You know, I used to, you know, sit backstage and, and eat and drink and do whatever because I, I could follow this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? <clears throat> I don't know if you know about guitar, but one time I went on Catch a Rising Star and you know, you know what it was? It was that time with the sponsor and I killed with the sponsor and turned around and put it down and I was going to play a song and the first swipe of my guitar, I broke the A string. Okay. A guitar has six strings, sure. from the thickest to the thinnest. And you can break the top string or even the second string, but breaking the second, the, from the top, the A string, it's like, it's like one of the wheels on your bicycle coming off. Yeah. And, and not knowing any better, I finished the song and I will <laughs> never, it, the audience was like, get this fucking <laughs> out, oh, God. <laughs> But, oh. you, but you can't help but think about that. But that's, uh, that's it, it, it's so crazy thinking about the That was a beginning. long time ago. Oh, it was well, two days you... ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, the, the, you know. So, Vic, here we are, and you've been in comedy now how many years? 16 years. Six, well, 16. You accomplished a lot in that short time. I mean. Thank you. Thank you really, you. really have. Yeah. I mean, you really, really have. How do you feel about um, the changes we're seeing in comedy in this century? Uh, ethnic jokes are not cool, certainly. You can joke about your own ethnicity. You can talk about Ireland, but it, it, you know. How it's uncomfortable is it that you can describe how about the way things are this century? As right. opposed to the last thing, we are some old farts. We right? really, really I are. I mean to interrupt, but, but you know, but yeah, things well, you are know, changing violently. Well, I remember during the Spanish-American War, <laughs> we could say anything, right. and now we really can't. How much do you do you alter? I don't. I don't alter at all. I whatever I say, I never ever want to make anyone uncomfortable. I never want to have anybody leaving insulted. I never want anybody feeling like they had a bad time. My jokes don't come from a place of shock value whatsoever. And I've said stuff that some people, I find when I go to a club that they'll, they don't listen to what I've said. They've heard words and they don't get the context of what I'm saying. And then they'll just, they'll, they'll bail. But that's their problem. And I'm not. Absolutely. I'm not, Absolutely. I can't bend for them because when the pendulum comes back and or when people, when people do kind of eventually like lighten up or when I find that audience that really does it, they're just there for a good time, I don't care. However, I've done shows, I work with this guy, Andy Cooney, and I go with him on the road every once in a while and he, all his audience are seniors and they're amazing people and I've learned, I used to look down my nose like, oh, I got just going for a paycheck, these seniors and, you know, and now I realize like when I, like who, who am I? to think that their laughter, their laughter is not as good as the, the, the hip laughter. Well said. And, and, it's, and, and I, yes. once I said that, once I let that go, I was like, oh, it's just a paycheck to me. Then I go, 
These are real people. And I'm like, they're laughing. They're, they're giving me what I'm giving them. And I go, and, and if I go to a young hip audience that won't give me that, I go, well, who are you? And I, I, right. I really it's had to kick my own. It flips. I really had to kick my own ass. And, and I was really embarrassed how I behaved and some of the conversations I had with comics to say that I was, I'm just doing it for the zeros and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to entertain these people at two in the afternoon. And I was embarrassed. To, I'm embarrassed to say that, but I, you kind of have to own your mistakes. Yes, and seniors. Seniors can be some of the best audiences. Yeah. I did an assisted living facility, and they were all really, really old. Sure. And the show was sure. terrific. But when I was leaving to go out to the parking lot, these two guys in white coats, they grabbed me. They said, <laughs> I, I had to go back to my room. Come on, Peter, you're a mashed potato waiting for you. <laughs> no, but it was, I remember fantasizing about being a kid, about being a comedian, because I wanted to be a comedian from such a small age, like a tiny kid. And in my head, I would always fantasize this, all these people laughing at me. But like, I never envisioned who was laughing at me. Right. I just envisioned the laughter. Right. Were and they now I'm college getting College kids, were they? Right, but now I'm getting the laughter and I'm looking down my nose at it. And I was like, shame on me, you know, shame on me. And, and so to alter my act, when I go into to deal with seniors, I just know what makes them laugh. And it's not like, oh, they're not gonna get this hip edgy bit I'm about to do. So I just don't do it. I know the stuff that works with them and they're jokes that I enjoy telling. So why not tell them and let's all have a great time about it? Well, I, I, I enjoy well, working the seniors because those are, that's my yeah, audience at this point. I'm so damn old. I'm like, I look how old these people are. Now. I told them I'm 15 years old. Yeah. So how do you feel about Irish jokes when you hear them from other comedians who might not be Irish? That would be, to me, that would be 1985. That kind of a thing. I don't care, Peter. I really like it's it's the whole it, thing about drinking and everything. Like, it doesn't. Know, it doesn't. It's just so built in. It doesn't you know? bother me. And if they laugh at it, let them laugh at it. I don't. I I don't get offended by anything. I, I sit there and go. What what kind of annoys me a little bit more is, and this is my own personal thing that I have to work through. It's nothing to do with anybody else. It's not a dig at anybody. But I know so many comics who are from other countries. Yes, and I've lived here for twenty years, and they're still doing like. I'm so confused that you guys, have you not got over that yet? You know, are you still right. confused about the traffic is on the other side of it? Like still 20 right. years, you haven't figured that out yet? Right, 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 you know, right. Can you not like expand your cranium and just write about something? <laughs> Again, that's your art. That's what you decide to put out there. That's your business. But that would annoy me more gotcha. than the actual fact that, oh, Irish people like to drink because I don't drink. I never, I never drink. Wait, you know? a second. what are you trying to do? Wreck the stereotype? <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Really? <clears throat> I don't drink. I'm not coming. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not in recovery. I just chose not to drink from an Excuse early. Excuse me. <laughs> you don't drink. You're not in recovery. But you cross the Atlantic Ocean for the baptisms. Come on. Yeah. You know, I, I, you, you know you're. <laughs> and I like to fight at little, the drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, I got some of them. <laughs> you, got, you got a little of it going. I got there. some of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so good. I remember telling Mick, you know. That, that I, my ethnic background, if you go centuries back, is English. And I remember I told him that, mm -hmm. and, and it was really uncalled for for you to push me across the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was no reason for that. I was just right, making right. conversation. <laughs> but, uh, Jesus. So the clubs, what do you think about the clubs now? The, 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 uh, I've you, worked with you in quite a number of time at, uh, times at the clubs. It looks to me like you're having fun. It's yeah, like, I mean, I'm having a. Bl I love, I love club settings. I love theaters, uh, but the clubs are where I form my act. It's where they're born, and in the theaters, I guess you get to reap what you sow and that kind of stuff. But I like the gritty work. I like, I like a joke bombing, believe it or not, um, because it shows. Because I like the art form of finding the right order of the words to yes, make. Yes, like I, I have a yes. joke now that took me. I was getting booed, like literally booed from people who were upset about it. And now, right now, it's my favorite joke to do. It's the audience's favorite joke to hear. And Let's I, hear it. Let's I, hear it right now. I, I open up with it, and it, it. it's, it's, I can't, I mean, can't perform it. You know what I mean? But the premise, I'll tell you the premise of it is, is like I get hymns commercials. Like yes. hymns is an erectile dysfunction pill, like for, you know, the, yes. the new hip kids, whatever. Well, I would never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my point, my point was like the, the premise of the joke is that there's only females advertising it it's never a man right and do, like there's no guy like you advertising women's products but going ladies if you have a heavy flow <laughs> like, you know <laughs> I mean? but then i go i go to like 
if you're going to put a woman in our commercial, they're always a hot 10, like a hot yes. in lingerie lying on the oh, bed. I go, if you're going to put a female in her commercial, at least put a woman I'm going to actually need an erectile dysfunction <coughs> right, pill right. for. Well, like who's going to have a problem right, with her? Like a West Virginia Mountain 2. <laughs> like, just, I'm going to need one for that. You know what I mean? With that's a two hysterical. Thing. But again, that's just the premise of it. And, and it's, it's uh, but like, it took me, to, and understandably, you could see how people are like, oh, I don't like that. That's not nice towards women. And well, you that's know, gross. And, but now they're on board. Yeah, but once, once you work, you have to work it up. You can only do that in a club. You got new comedians it. watching. Did you hear it? You start with a joke. It can get a boo. Yeah. And you mess with it. You change mm -hmm. it. You change your attitude. You change the words. You're hearing it. Uh, you can fix it. You, you see, uh, Peter is a professor. He has his own comedy school because I know that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> right, he's right. working his way into a club. Stand so up I'm, university. He's making a tape now so he doesn't have to turn up for class one that's day. That's right, right. Guys, just press play yeah, right. and I'll see you Stand Monday. <laughs> Standupuniversity.com if you want to you start see? out in stand-up comedy. I saw him. Um, well, but, he's, but he's absolutely right and that's, <clears throat> that's great. And like you say, when you get to the theaters, you're just doing what you do yeah. because you put the whole thing together. Right, but right. there's nothing like a, a club show, no matter, taking money out of the, out of the equation, yeah. a good 300, 500 seat oh, room with people packed in, I, you know. It's the best. I know. You know but I, I like the people so they're right at your mm -hmm. knees. You know what I mean? The like, best. So you're working. Right, Low you know. ceiling. Yes. The spotlight ceiling. hits you. You can yep. can't see past the second row. And you're just going. You're going on 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 your instincts. But if a joke is working well in a club setting, in a theater setting, wow! It's yeah, gonna, it's going to be. Of course, be, uh, like a, a twenty minute set or a thirty minute set at a comedy club is about a fifteen minute set at a theater. Yep. Because the laughter is just rolling. It's coming from the back. And I just did a fifteen hundred seater this weekend, and you, you, I was supposed to do half an hour, and I did maybe seventeen minutes of material because of the laughter just kept coming and come. we were all having a blast and it just, it's, you, can't, it's, you can't beat it. So you can't beat it. What's that feel like? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll I'm get just, there one day. I will, one day I want to do 17 <laughs> minutes, I want to get 17 minutes worth of material and stretch it into 30. I, I like the clubs, <clears throat> I mean the theaters, the small theaters that, that used to be yeah. vaudeville houses, then they became movie theaters sure. and other theaters. And I like the fact that you can't see because nowadays I don't have anybody in the balcony, so I'm, I'm not looking up there and going, "Oh crap!" You know, I'm like I got the first three rows is packed. For all I know, the place is full. You know, but you have to admit, Mick, I've seen you at the clubs. Yeah. And sometimes you're on stage, and I wouldn't say you're angry, but you're into it and you're getting intense. And that's part of what you do sometimes. Because I believe in what I'm saying and the jokes I don't do anymore, I just don't, like I can't, I can't fake anger. Right. Right, I can't, it's not authentic for the joke. I can't fake frustration because I'm over that now. Yeah. So the jokes I write, I write them in the moment of how I'm feeling. Like if I'm arguing with my kids and I just said, right, you know what, I'm writing this down. I go to the club and I bang my kids and the kids are dying laughing. But a year later, and I try to do the same joke, I'm not angry at my kid anymore. Yeah. I'm not, and so now- So you can't pull that off. I can't pull it off because I don't know, maybe I'm not as a good performer as most comics are, but I just like the authenticity of it. And if, if I don't, like I have a comedian friend, we know, I don't know if you've ever I've been around, like Terry McNeely. Yes. Like Terry McNeely started the same day as me and I love Terry McNeely, but the guy gets red faced on stage. And I, I, I say to him, you can't still, you've been doing that joke for 10 years. You still can't be angry about that. You know, I've got to know, me back what, in what Ireland did, and I'm like, I'm okay, I'm over it. You know? Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence Olivier said, act my dear boy. Right, right, right. 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 Act, my dear and that's boy. maybe what I'm lacking probably because when I, when I stop believing in the bit, like I don't have that passion and that feeling for that bit anymore. I just wow. go, all right, you're done. But that's, you know, <laughs> there's so, a lot to be said for that. That's the honesty. I right. love it. I now love you it. say he gets what you don't ever like actually kickbox anybody in the front row, row or anything no like that. but there's been there's been hairy incidents there's been seriously yeah absolutely I, give I, us one give us a hairy incident i'll give you two i'll give you one right. one was uh i'm i'm lucky we're lucky to we're comedians because we can de-escalate any situation 
from a, like even a giant. So the, the one that I actually have it on, I don't believe in posting crowd work online, which a lot of comics do. I only post material. If you want to see who I am, you want to see my joke, follow me on social media, it's all there. Um, but this one day I'm doing this bit about Italian food, right? And, and I talk about, because I lived in Italy, and I talk about how Long Island, like you tell, I, I described having a pizza under out of a 150 year old brick oven under the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And I go, but you tell any Long Island Italian that, they go, yeah, but you got to go to Sal's and Patch on. <laughs> right, right, right. Because of how <laughs> arrogant. to be next right, door to my house. Right, right, I right. Because it. of how arrogant they are about the cook. My wife's an Italian, so they're arrogant about the cooking. And I, I lived in Italy, and it's not. So that was the premise. <laughs> I'm not doing the joke, by the way. I'm not doing okay. it just to see her. And I, 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 go, I go, the most enjoyable Italian food I've had in this country is the Olive Garden. Now, I was about to. <laughs> they don't give me a chance to turn it around, and I end up, you know, backhandedly kind of shitting on the Olive Garden, but they don't. This, this audience didn't give me a chance because the booze come and they always come when I say that line, but I have a line that gets them back. But this one guy was like, you know, F you, you want to go outside, you potato eating piece of shit. And I'm just, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm looking at the security guard and go like, now? Like, you wanna, like, do you want to take him out now? Because I have no problem, you know, because I said to him, I go, buddy, go get five of your friends, meet me after the show, you might have a chance. Uh, but the other time I was joking online, now I ride motorcycles. Right? I love riding motorcycles. I follow groups like the Hells Angels. But I'm on TikTok and I have two TikTok accounts. I have one is McThomas Comedy. The other one, I had to create a troll account because of what happened. Now, a troll account is I don't go after people. I don't insult people. But I figured if I make a joke that's going to offend. So I'm following the Hells Angels and they're riding out in this post. Right? There's like 40 of them riding out. And at the back, there's this massive guy. Massive guy, like, a, like at least 400 pounds. And he's got the patch and all that stuff on it. And all I said was, and again, I'm just being, I'm just being a dick. I don't mean any of this stuff. <laughs> and all I said was, motorcycle, again, I ride a motorcycle. So I'm kind of being like, what's the word? I'm like, I, I, satire. It's, it's satire. Yeah. So I said, motorcycle clubs are, are like bridal parties. There's always one fat one. <laughs> right now, I'm just being a dick, right? Oh, that's so funny. funny. I'm that's just being funny. a dick. So I'm that's upstairs. I'm at Zany's in Chicago it, last March, and I'm upstairs. And the green room is you kind of, you kind of, the stage is there, and the green room is upstairs. You have to walk through the crowd to get to the stage. It's not like you come down backwards. You're on, and uh, sold out Zany's. Sold out Zany's. Oh. It was of course it was St. Patrick's weekend. Sold out Zany's, and they come up to me, go, there's, there's people downstairs to see you, and I was like, yeah, I know, like. That's, I'm, my name's on the board. Of course they came to see me. You know, he goes, no, 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 these guys want to speak to you. Oh. And I go down and there's six Hells Angels guys. And they came, like, and in the comments, they were like, oh, we're going to kick your ass. I go, oh no, please don't turn up at Zany's in Chicago on March 15th. Right. Whenever I've been. <laughs> I'm going to work in a plug. And they showed up. Oh, what happened? And well, first of all, they, we, we kind of, they, they go, well, you know, what do you got to say for yourself? I go, guys, I was just, I was just kidding. I didn't mean to offend you with those two jokes. And the guy goes, what do you mean two jokes? <laughs> I go, oh, you didn't see the other one where I said, what's the hardest thing about being in the motorcycle club coming out to your dad? <laughs> and, and, again, and the big one just started to laugh. And I go, you know what? Can I just get you around the drinks, guys? And we'll call it quits. And they go, yeah, yeah, let's do that then. All right, all right. But That's, man, that but, is brilliant. But I don't, I don't care. Like, like, I love it. I don't, I don't care like, about that kind of stuff too. Like, you right. can't just throw your weight around. We have right. got to pull the plug. Oh, no. No, wait, 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 wait. We, we definitely want to have Mick Thomas back. I would love to come back. Absolutely. But before... Uh, we, ow. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my you, knee replaced. Surgically replaced Kick knee. Kick his ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, we want, Mick Thomas has a podcast. Let's uh, mention it. Give it a plug. What's the Yeah, name? every week it's cheaper than therapy. It's just me uh, ranting. It's like my own open mic. That's the name of it? Yeah, cheaper it's than cheaper therapy. Than it's therapy. just me. I pick topics that I want to talk about before I get to the club, and I'll just talk about them, and I'll go. I'll just nonstop talk about it for 20 minutes and it's done. Cheaper Great. than therapy. And yes. they find this on all the platforms? Yeah, everywhere on all the platforms. Mick Thomas Comedy on every And every is it just media. you or do you have a it's partner just just like me. I do? That I, I have another podcast with my good buddy Corey Brooks oh, called okay. The Man's ID Show. We do that once a month and that's finally get a chance to kind of just So you know, you know what off. it's like to have to carry yeah, a yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Corey's great, but it's great to bounce someone <laughs> off, you know, jokes off of. That was a, uh, yeah, yeah, I see I'm laughing. Can't you tell I'm laughing? On the inside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nick, we definitely you, want you back. Thanks, oh, lads. I had a great you time. You have been Appreciate terrific. It. You Thank are you. Oh, this guy. Thanks so much. Nick Thomas, if you ever see him at a comedy club advertised, go. He's terrific. I'll see you. Thanks, lads. All Appreciate right. It. Jackie Marling, Peter Bales, and the one and only Mick Thomas. Thank you. Cheers. See you next Thank time you. on Stand Up Memories. 
That was a pretty good episode. A new episode every Wednesday with me, Peter Bales, Jackie the Joke Man Martling, comedians, interesting people. Leave a comment. We'll, we're gonna get, we'll get uh, what am I saying? I don't know. We're gonna get back to you. We will respond to your comment. Standupmemories.com, if you go there, it shows all the different platforms. Oh, Spotify, we're on everything. Every Wednesday. Stand Up Memories. Every Wednesday. A new episode.